Good morning. So in this video, I'm going to tackle fractional distillation or multi-stage distillation. So let me show you the PowerPoint. Okay, so for, for fractional distillation, unlike the previous topic in distillation, this is generally multi-stage distillation. So the publication of the distillation column is similar to the publication of a gas absorption tower. So if you still remember, it's, it's possible that you can use simple sheep tray or trays with holes or bubble cup trays <clears throat> and you will have several of these trays so basically in our calculation we will try to determine the number of trays that you're going to put in your tower <clears throat> so just like uh, just like in differential distillation we, we still have the same variables you have the feed the distillate product, the bottoms product. But in this particular distillation setup, we have a condenser. So the condenser condenses the vapor coming out of the top of the column to produce liquid. <clears throat> liquid distillate and, and some, some part of the liquid is returned to the column as liquid reflux or RL, no? This is L. <clears throat> so, on the lower portion of the column, we have the reboiler. So again, a reboiler is a heat exchanger. Usually, we use steam to heat the liquid coming out of the distillation column. <clears throat> so, part, part of that liquid coming out of the column is evaporated and return back to the column. And then the rest, the rest is withdrawn as bottoms product. So aside, aside from this, uh, the section above the feed or the trace above the feed is known as the enriching section or the re rectifying section. So generally this is known as the enriching section because the concentration uh, of the solutions or of the vapor is greater than of the feed. So generally, sa fractional distillation, the concentration is expressed as the, as the mole fraction of the more volatile component. So in the stripping section, generally the concentration is lower than that of the feed. So XF is the concentration of the feed with respect to the uh, more volatile component. XD is the concentration in the distillate and XW is the concentration in the bottom strata. So <clears throat> what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to derive the equation uh, use used for graphical solution of fractional distillation, the McCabe-Tell method. No? So we're going to derive the general equation and also the shortcut equation. And then we're going to solve the problem graphically. Pero sa board exam naman, uh, wala namang graphical solution. Pero lumalabas pa rin yung mga uh, numerical calculation. Like for example, uh, the calculation of the y-intercept of the rectifying line, the calculation of the slope of the rectifying line, okay? the calculation of the quality of the feed, lumalabas pa rin yung sa board exam. So, yun yung i-discuss natin dito sa uh, video na to. Okay, so first let's let's take a look at the ano, rectifying section. 
So the rectifying section is the section above the feed. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform a, an overall balance and a component balance along the dash line, along this dash line. So overall mass balance, as you can see, uh, the only stream going in is Vn plus 1. So that's why this is it's the uh, variable on the left side. And then the outgoing stream are the distillate D and L sub N. So this is our overall mass balance. Vn plus 1 is equals to Ln plus D. So when, when we perform the component mass, component mode balance, uh, <clears throat> basically we're just uh, multiplying the stream with the mole fraction, corresponding mole fraction of the more volatile component. So we have Vn plus 1 times Yn plus 1 is equals to Ln. The concentration of Ln is X sub N. That's one. And then the concentration of D is XD. So this is our uh, <coughs> component mole balance. So in order to derive the operating line equation, basically we just transpose Vn plus 1 to the other side of the equation. So <coughs> this is the equation of our operating line. You know? So remember the concept of the operating line. Uh, operating line is uh, the line that describes the concentration, the actual concentration uh, in each in each uh, tray, no, in each tray of the distillation column. <clears throat> For example, uh, the the pair of uh, points. In, in this particular column is x1 and y2. So as you can see, this, this belongs to this space. Enough that those two, those two mole fraction, x1 and y2. So that's why in the operating line, you have x sub n and y sub n plus 1. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to plot this in a, in a composition diagram. No? In a composition diagram. So in order to plot this, because uh, this is a line, you need at least two points. So the easiest way to do this is plot the first point. Generally, the first point is xn, xd, xd. So basically, it's it's on the topmost. No, no, it's on the topmost. Uh, portion of the column here, right here, right here. So, <clears throat> since since the condenser is a total condenser, okay. <clears throat> so whatever whatever is evaporated or whatever is the concentration of the vapor, when you liquefy all of the vapor, you're going to have a liquid with the same concentration. So that's why the first point is x d x d. So that's the first point of the operating line. And then the second point would be the would be the y-intercept. That's the easiest way to plot the operating line. No? So this is the, according to this equation, this is the, this is the formula for the y-intercept. dx, d, dn plus 1. Pero later on, we're going to derive a shortcut equation for the uh, y-intercept. <coughs> Actually, pwede ako mag-drive. Drive ko na pala ito. No? Drive ko na ito. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> Let me try to derive the shortcut equation for the y-intercept. <clears throat> okay. So this is the general equation for the y-intercept. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Okay, in deriving the equation for the y-intercept, uh, I need to introduce the concept of R. R is the refractive issue, ano? So reflux is is this L over here, you know? This is the reflux. This is your reflux. Okay. So R or the reflux ratio is simply equal to L over D. This is the ratio of the reflux to the distillate. <clears throat> so L over D. And then we're just going to use the equation L is equals to R D to, to derive the shortcut equation for the Y intercept. So since Y intercept is equals to D X D over B N plus one. And then if you perform, if you're going to perform an overall mass balance at the condenser, this is the condenser. If you're going to perform an overall mass balance, at the condenser. You will you will arrive at B. B B is equals to L plus D. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this equation right here. So Y intercept now will become DXD. Uh, L plus D. Okay, and then <clears throat> if we're going to substitute L with R times D, the Y intercept equation will become dxd divided by so rd plus d. And then you can cancel out d. So the y-intercept oh, shortcut equation yeah. would be xd divided by r plus 1. So you need to remember this equation. Uh, xd divided by r plus 1 is equal to y-intercept. So that's the shortcut equation for... Uh, Y intercept. <clears throat> so in in ano in in summary, because we need to plot the operating line. So in summary, uh, plotting a line, you need two points. So the first point is x d x d. No, first point is x d x d. First point of the line is x d x d. And then the second point is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is equals to xd, <coughs> xd divided by r plus one. Generally, r is given in the problem, and also xd is given in the problem. So you can you can now plot the uh, no, the rectifying section operating line. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so sometimes, sometimes, uh, this is the name of the method, the Macaitel method, yung ginagawa natin graphical solution for fractional distillation. <clears throat> so sometimes, uh, you, can, you can also plot the rectifying section, uh, as you can see from the, from the, uh, no, no, from the slide. <clears throat> uh, what, what is the use of the operating line? So as you can see, once, once you have drawn the operating line, 
you can draw this uh, stair like this this is there like uh, lines to to find the number of trays that you need in the you know in the column no so that's the that's the purpose why we are drawing the uh, operating line the rectifying section operating line <clears throat> okay another way of drawing this another way of drawing this is of course you have the, the slope the first point the first point is x dx t and then you need to calculate the slope that's another way you know of course, it's it's much more difficult to draw to draw a line with a point and a slope than a line with two points. No, it's much more uh, <clears throat> it's much more complicated. Pero sa board exam kasi, uh, they are still asking what is the slope of the rectifying line. So from our deriva derivation on the last slide, I I've shown that the slope is generally equal to L over B. So, the, the slope shortcut equation in terms of R can also be derived. <clears throat> so, since this is equal to L over B, you just, you just substitute, no, you just substitute the, uh, the equation for L, diba? L is equals to RD. And then B, B is equal to L plus D. And then again, replace R with RD. Then then you can cancel out D. So the shortcut equation for slope is R over R plus 1. Ito naman pag nakalimutan nyo, if you ever forget this formula, you can find this in the handbook. So... Just go to the chapter in the handbook or just <clears throat> mark. I'm going to mention the page later. No? Mark your handbook. So this is the equation for the slope. R over R plus 1. This only R or the reflux ratio is generally given sa triangle. Okay. So now that we have the two equation for y intercept. <coughs> For y-intercept and for the slope of the rectifying section line, <clears throat> so let me just mention where you can where you can find this general uh, operating line equation in the handbook. Oh, no, you can find this on page eighteen, chapter thirteen. Chapter thirteen is distillation, and then on page eighteen you can find this equation. Okay, <clears throat> and then chapter nineteen, uh, you can you can find the. Equation for the slope, the shortcut equation for the slope, r over 1 plus r. And also the definition of r. The definition of r is L over D. So you can find this on page 19. So browse, browse nila lamang yung, ano, yung chapter 13, which is this definition. Okay, so another thing that we need to, in, in solving the, ano, in solving the, uh, uh, this the fractional distillation problem is Q. Q is Q is the quality of the feed. You know? Q stands for quality of the feed. Quality of the feed. <clears throat> okay. Um another thing aside from being kasi di ba letter Q quality quality of the feed. Another thing is Q is also the mole fraction of liquid in the pin. So, syempre, this is only true if your pin is saturated. Ano? No, no, no. I mean, I mean it, it's at its boiling point. Ano? You can only use this when it is at its boiling point. So, mole fraction of liquid in the pin. 
Okay. Pero generally, if, if halimbawa, if this is subcooled liquid, o kaya naman uh, superheated vapor, in order to calculate Q, you need to use this definition from Gene Copley. Ano? So Q is the heat needed to vaporize one mole of feed at entering condition. So if it's if it's subcooled liquid <coughs> divided by molar latent heat of vaporization. So you can imagine if your feed is a uh, subcooled liquid. Uh, the numerator will be greater than the denominator. So, the Q would be greater than 1. Now, if your feed is vapor, you don't need to memorize, you, need, you don't need to <laughs> vaporize it. You, know? you don't need to vaporize it. So, if you're not going to vaporize it, the amount of heat needed would be negative. And then, your Q would, would be negative if the feed is, is vapor. Or, or if it's saturated vapor, it would be zero. No? So Q would be equal to zero. If it's superheated vapor, it would be negative. So that's the consequence of this definition. In, in reality, in reality, most of the time, the feed is liquid, subcooled liquid, saturated liquid, or boiling liquid. <clears throat> so these are these are the most practical equation for Q. This one. Okay. So <clears throat> as you can see, H B minus H L H L right here is delta H of vaporization. No? This is delta H of vaporization. So this is the delta H of vaporization. Tapos, uh, CPL right here, this is the heat capacity or specific heat of your feed. No? And then TB right here is the boiling point. This is the temperature of the feed. Okay, this is the specific heat of the feed. Okay. So another another equation uh, that we need to discuss is the feed section equation. So as you can see, the feed section equation, the derived equation, contains the quality of the feed. So, so in this equation, as you can see, the, the slope, the slope of the feed section line is equals to Q over Q minus 1. Okay, this is the slope of the feed section. And then this is the y-intercept. Uh, for, for the feed section, uh, generally in order to plot the feed section line, uh, you use the first point, which is xf, xf, just like the rectifying section is xd, xd. And in the feed section, the first point is xf, xf. Okay, and then you, you need to calculate the slope. So, in order to calculate the slope, first you need to calculate the Q, the quality of the feed. And then after quantifying, uh, calculating the quality of the feed, calculate the slope. So the slope of the feed section line is equals to Q over Q minus so let's let's try to derive this equation. Uh, the slope of the feed line. So So let, let's consider uh, consider the the feed uh, 
the PID uh, stage, ano? The PID stage. Yung the PID stage, tapos PID is entering, ano? So, if, if, the, if your PID is um, if your PID has a liquid fraction and a vapor fraction, it will separate into two, no? Into two portions, no? The liquid uh, fraction, LF, and the, coming from the feed, no? And the vapor fraction, BF. Okay? So, if, if the concentration of your feed is XF, it's designated as, as an XF, and then the concentration of the vapor fraction of your feed is, let's, let's call that Y, and the concentration of uh, the liquid fraction, let's call that X. So, basically, just perform an overall mole balance. <clears throat> so it would be F is equals to BF plus LF. Then perform a component mole balance. So that would be F, XF, BF, Y plus LF, X. So all you need to do in order to have this kind of equation is isolate y. So in seven, you're going to transpose LFX to the other side and also BF. Enough. So we will have something like y is equals to F XF. Okay. Minus LF X. And then divided by BF. This is divided by BF. This is divided by B. <clears throat> so, we're interested on the slope. This is the slope. L, negative, LF, BF. Slope of the feed line. This is the slope. Okay. <clears throat> so, by, by using the definition of Q, Q is the mole fraction of liquid. So, uh, for example, LF is simply equal to Q times F. I said this is the mole fraction of liquid, enough. So just just substitute this to LF, and then BF. If you're going to perform a mass balance here, is equals to F minus LF. Right? BF is F minus LF, and then you just substitute that to this equation. Okay, so negative LF over BF is equals to yeah. negative QF divided by uh, B. B is F minus LF. Okay? And then you, you also replace LF with Q, uh, QF. So what will happen is the slope would be equal to negative QF divided by F minus QF. And then you can cancel out F. So as you can see, the slope, where when you input this negative on the denominator, the slope would become Q over Q minus 1. Okay? So that's how, that's how the slope of the pitch section is justified. No? Just, anyway, just, just try to remember, the slope of the pitch section is Q over Q minus 1. This is the formula for the slope. So this, this is, this is, these two are the equations that you need to remember for the feed line. <clears throat> Basically, in McAtel method, you need to plot the rectifying section line and the feed section line. And then, uh, you can you can after that you can stage up. Stage up means you can draw the stair like uh, lines and count the number of uh, trays from your graphical solution. Why? 
Okay, so let's let's first let's try to solve this illustrative problem. So this illustrative problem I should to calculate the quality of the feed Q. So if it needs 20.1 kilojoules per mole to heat the pit to its boiling point, and its enthalpy of vaporization is 40.6 kilojoules per mole. So, so just try to remember the general equation for Q. Okay, so the general equation for Q is uh, yung, yung kasing ano, yung CPL times TV minus TF. Actually, that's sensible. That is sensible heat. Ano? That is sensible heat. So the, one of the general equation is Q is equals to SH, this is the sensible heat, plus latent heat divided by latent heat. Ito yung CP times TB minus TF. Itong sensible heat. Ano? So, just, just simply substitute the given in the problem. So, sensible heat is 20.1 kilojoules per mole plus 40.6 kilojoules per mole divided by all over no? 40.6 kilojoules per mole. So, Q is almost one point five zero, one point five zero. So I, I hope we get something from this illustrative problem. I, I've, I've done this before we solve the uh, main example. Okay, so let's let's proceed to the main example. This is example eleven point four dash one from I know from Jim Copley's. <clears throat> Uh, a liquid mixture of benzene toluene is to be distilled in a fractionating tower at 101.3 kilopascal pressure. <clears throat> the feed of 100 kilogram mole per hour is liquid and it contains 45 mole percent benzene and 55 mole percent toluene. Um, and enters at 327.6 Kelvin. A distillate containing 95 mole percent benzene and 5 mole percent to mole toluene and a bottoms containing 10 mole percent benzene and 90 mole percent toluene are to be obtained. The reflux ratio is 4 is to 1. The average heat capacity of the pit is 159 kilojoules per kilogram mole per Kelvin. And the average latent heat is 32,099 kilojoules per kilogram mole. The equilibrium data for this system are given in table 11.1-1 and figure 11.1-1. Calculate the kilogram mole per hour of distillate, kilogram mole per hour of bottoms, and the number of theoretical phases. Okay. Yung, yung ano, kilogram moles per hour distillate at saka yung kilogram per, per hour bottoms, uh, madali lang isolve yun. Ano? Basically, mag-overall mole balance lang tayo tapos uh, mag uh, magbebenzene balance lang <clears throat> tapos that's that's the two equation those two equations are enough to solve for d and b ano lang yan <clears throat> yun namang number of theoretical trace uh, basically um, you just need to draw the rectifying line okay so we're, we're going to use the concentration diagram of benzene toluene and then we need to draw <coughs> the rectifying line. So how do we draw the rectifying line? The first point is x d x d, no? Tapos the second point is the y intercept. The formula for y intercept is 
xd divided by r plus 1. r is given, r is 4. Right there, oh? right there. Okay, so once once you have drawn the rectifying line, the next step is to draw the feed line. So the first point of the feed line is XF, XF. So XF, more volatile component, whole fraction of the more volatile component. Between benzene and toluene, the more volatile is benzene. So that's why XF is 0.45. So that would be the first point, 0.45, 0.45. And then, you need to calculate the, the slope. So first, calculate Q, the quality of the feed. So the quality of the feed equation is Cp times Tb minus Tf. We have the Tf over here, and we have the Cp right here, 159. <clears throat> Plus the heat of vaporization, 32,099, divided by 32,099. You will going to get Q. And then finally, calculate the slope. The slope is... Q over Q minus 1. And then draw the feed line. And then uh, you need to draw the, uh, no, you need to draw the, uh, <clears throat> the stripping section line. So in order to draw the stripping section line, the first point of the stripping section is XW, XW. So it is given that the bottom is a concentration of 10 mole percent. So XW is 0.10. So from 0.10, just connect this point to the intersection of the feed section line and the rectifying section line. Okay? And then you're ready to stage off or draw the stair-like lines and then count the number of steps. The number of steps correspond to the number of trays. So let's try to do those things, you know? So I'm going to share a white one. Okay. So first, we're going to perform an overall mold balance and a, and a, and a benzene balance, you know? Let me draw the, uh, the system first. <clears throat> so you have a distillation column. Uh, you have a feed entering the column. You have a condenser. The product of the condenser is divided into two. We have the distillate over here. <clears throat> and then we have the reboiler. So this evaporates some fraction of the, of the liquid. And then whatever goes out of the reboiler is your bottom product. <laughs> okay. So in the problem, you are given that F is equals to 100 kilogram mole per R, and then XF is equal to 0 0.45. XD, XD is 0 0.95, and XB is 0 0.10. <clears throat> so just perform an overall mole balance. This would be F is equals to D plus B. So that would be, if, if our basis is one R of operation, I'm going to use this as a basis. So F would be 100 kilogram mole. And then D Plus D. Unknown yung D at saka B. Then, let's perform a, a benzene balance or component mass balance. Ano? <clears throat> okay. So, it's, it's basically F, XF, D, XD, 
plus b x b. So just substitute in this equation all the you know, available given available variables. So f is one hundred kilogram mole. X f is point forty five. D is unknown, XD is 0.95, B is 0.10, and then simply uh, solve D and B using your calculator. So D would be equal to, supposed to be equal to 41.2 uh, kilogram mole per R, while B would be equal to 58.8. Okay, so these two are required in the problem. You know? D, 41.2, and B, 58.8. Okay. So next, let's let's proceed to the ano, to the graphical solution of the number of trades or the number of theoretical stages. So going to clear this and then we're going to calculate the y-intercept. <clears throat> okay, we're going we're going to use the shortcut equation for y-intercept. So y-intercept is simply x d over r plus one. So this is xd is 0 0.95 divided by r is 4 given in the problem plus 1. So the y intercept is basically 0 0.19. Okay. So <clears throat> yeah. So the first point of the Rectifying line is 0 0.95, 0 0.95, and then the y-intercept is 0 0.90. So let me show you the Basically, ano lang yan naman yan. Parang ganito lang yan. Halimbawa, kung natatandaan nyo pa sa physical chemistry nyo, ganito yung itsura nung ano, ganito yung itsura nung benzene toluene plot. Ano? Ito yung, ito, yung, ito yung mole fraction ng benzene sa vapor paste. Ito yung mole fraction ng benzene sa, sa liquid. Ano? So, kung halimbawa, yung first point natin, 0 0.95, 0 0.95, XD, XD, ito yung first point, yung rectifying line. So, 0 0.95. Given to ano? 0 0.95. Tapos yung y-intercept niya is 0 0.99. Ito yung y-intercept. Magdudugtungin niyo lang to. So, this, this is would be the, ano, the rectifying section of it. Okay? So, ayan. Dalawang line lang naman yung i-co-construct nyo. The second line, the second line is the feed section. So, ang first point naman ng feed section, XF, XF. So, ang ating feed concentration ay 0 0.45, 0 0.45. Yun yung una niyang uh, point. Okay? So, all you need to do is to calculate the slope of this line. No? Para madraw nyo. <clears throat> so, initially, you need to calculate Q. Tapos, you need to calculate the slope, which is Q over Q minus. So... Try natin i-calculate yung ano. Let me clear this para mas kalina. So, Q muna. Ang general equation natin ng Q ay CPL times TV. Ito yung boiling point ng feed. Minus TF. Ito yung temperature ng feed. Given naman to. Itong dalawa, given to ano? Ito lang yung sosol natin. <clears throat> Plus yung uh, delta H of vaporization or yung latent heat. Yung delta H of vaporization ko natatandaan yung given din. No? So, you need to, ano, you need to find TV. So, for example, what I'm trying to say is given na lahat yan para sa TV, ano? 
So for example, uh, CPL is 159 kilojoules per kilogram mole per Kelvin. And then, ang T bilang yung nawawala. Ang TF from the problem is 327.6 Kelvin. Yung delta H of vaporization is 32,099 kilojoules per kilogram mole. So as you can see, pag minultiply nyo itong K, magka-cancel out ito. Para sa silang unit yung dalawang tama. Tapos i-divide nyo all over sa 32,099. Okay. So let's let's try to find TV. We need we need a table of data to find TV, ano? Ah, uh, tapos magi interpolate tayo do sa table of data. So let let me share share you the ano. Let me share you first the. Tani hindi ko mawala. Ano? Eh? Kung nawala, sulat na lang natin. Eh. <clears throat> let me share you the ano the PowerPoint again. Okay. This is this is the table. Uh, remember our our feed is forty five percent. No, the concentration is forty five percent. So it's it's between these two. So if you say the feed will boil. Uh, between 363.2 and 368.2 so at, at this point i think you already know how to use the calculator to interpolate the boiling point of the solution no so simply simply find the ano simply find the boiling point at uh, 0xa is equals to 0 0.45 by interpolation. So by interpolation, uh, you should be able to come up with 367.1 Kelvin. Okay? <clears throat> so that's how, how to find the boiling point. Ano? Okay. So let's let's go back to our ano, to our blackboard. And then let's enter this 367.1. So TB is 367.1. This one. This is 367.1 Kelvin. I I I hope you still remember how to interpolate. So just just solve Q. Q would be equal to um 1.195 Okay, and then calculate the slope slope of the feed section the feed line Feed section operating line. No, that's the most more complete uh, description of this slope So that would be Q over Q minus 1 So that would be 1.195 all over 1.195 minus 1. So this will give you something like 6.12. Okay, so together with XF, XF, and then that's the first point, and then the slope is 6.12, you can now draw the, the feed line. So basically, uh, in, in the graphing paper, if you have a graphing paper, uh, it means the slope is rise over run. You will you will you will count six division upward and approximately one division or six point twelve division upward. Parang ganito, ano? So six division upward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yon. Tapos one division to the left. <clears throat> so. If this is your original point, this is your XF, XF, the second point will be around here. 
Well, that's how that's how to draw the you know, the feed line. This is the this is going to be your feed line. Okay, so as you can see, the slope is positive, so it is slanted to the right. <clears throat> okay, so that's how the uh, the, the mechanical is done. Let's let's uh, <clears throat> let me show you the uh, the final calculation of the mechanical. Okay, you, you can check first. We can check. You can check our answers. Enough. So D is equals to forty-one point two. Correct. So still remember W is fifty-eight point eight. Okay. Tapos RQ is one point one nine five, and then the slope is six point twelve. So this is these are from ano no gene copy. So tama naman yung nasolve natin. Clear that. Okay, so this is the <coughs> um, final uh, final step in our problem solving, no? So you can first you can construct the rectifying line, except except the first point is except except right here. It's point ninety five point ninety five, no? Here point nine point nine point ninety five. <coughs> Tapos ah. Uh, the y intercept is 0.19, so around here, I know, 19. We just draw a line. So that's good. You're going to draw the rectifying section operating line. <clears throat> First point of XF is 0.45. This is 0.5, so this is 0.45. Ito yung first point ng ano? <clears throat> 0.45. Okay. Tapos draw a a line. Draw a, uh, a few line. So just just draw a slope, no? So six division up, one one division to the left, <coughs> to the right. Sorry, to the right, and then ito yung magiging ano no? Dulo nung line. So just connect the two point XF and XF and this point. So this is the feed line or the Q line. Okay. And then the, the the next point is x b x b. So this is point ten point ten. No, this point right here is point ten point ten. Let me, let me use my pen. This point here is point ninety five point ninety five. And then draw the y intercept. This point here is point nineteen. It's the y-intercept. Okay. So just connect, connect this point and this point to draw this line. <clears throat> the next is the, uh, no, the next is the uh, feed line. So the first point here, this is 0 0.19, 0 0.19. Okay. So just connect the two. Uh, draw the slope, no? draw the slope. So this is 6.12, the slope is 6.12. So the intersection of the rectifying line and the feed line, connect connect this point. This is x, xw, xw. So this is, this point right here is 0 0.10, 0 0.10. So just connect this to this point, the intersection of the feed line and the rectifying line, and you're going to draw the stripping section line. Okay, so the final step is draw these steps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So approximately you need eight stages or trays. No, if if each tray is one hundred percent efficient, you need approximately eight trays. 
Okay, so I, I hope you, you are able to follow the solution. <clears throat> okay, so I will I will try to record another video and that would be I think that would be the last video included in the midterm. So see you in the next video.